Meta AI just introduced Llama 3, their most capable large language model. And what's really interesting about this model is they finally gave us a website where anyone for free could use Llama 3. This is at meta.ai, and I'm going to show you this as well. I'm going to test some prompts and test out the new Llama 3 model. They also ran Llama 3 model against other large language models, so I'll show you the benchmarks. And Llama 3 could also generate images, and inside of this meta.ai website, you could also animate with one click. You could also edit them with a text prompt. And if you're not familiar with Llama, basically it's an open source model, so it's completely free to use on all these websites but it's also available for you to download and build different applications. If you're in business, a lot of people build their AI applications using Llama instead of ChatGPT or other models. Again, completely free open source model, but not available to use inside of meta.ai. It's also rolled out just today inside of Instagram, inside of WhatsApp, inside of Facebook Messenger. It's pretty much everywhere a big release here from Meta AI. Now, let me point out some of the key information here, then I'll run Llama 3 through a test on meta.ai. It currently comes in two models. So there's the 8B model, a smaller model, and a 70B, 70 billion parameter model. So that's a much larger model, similar to Llama 2. And they probably will have more models rolling out somewhere, maybe in between these to make it three models. A lot of the large language models right now come in three different sizes. So the most capable model is always going to be the bigger parameter model. And you could also see on this other page, and I'll put everything in the description below for you to find all these different pages that I'm talking about. But here, Llama 3, it shows the training for these two different models. The context length is pretty small relative to some other models that we have inside of ChatGPT, for example, is at 8K. But this is double the size of the previous model. And the knowledge cutoff date, March 2023 and December 2023, depending on what models. So the 70B model is the most capable and the most recent. I believe this is pretty much the same cutoff date right now inside of ChatGPT. This is the knowledge base cutoff as well inside of ChatGPT. And I'll break down this benchmark in a second right now, but they use 12 key use cases for coming up with that, and that's in their blog post right here. So asking for advice, brainstorming, classification. These are the 12 different use cases they used to come up with this benchmark. And here's a closer look at the benchmark. So this is Llama 3, the 8B model, and there's a 70B model here. And look at what they compared this against, because this is an interesting choice. The 8B model, they compared it against Google, the Gemma model here. This is an open source model too. Mistral is also an open source model. So they compared it to something that is similar to what this one is, and they didn't compare it to ChatGPT, for example. In fact, even in this model, they did not compare it to ChatGPT. I didn't find any benchmarks where they compared this directly to ChatGPT, but we will do a deep dive video comparing Llama 3 versus the free version of ChatGPT. Llama 3 is still not going to be comparable to ChatGPT 4, the paid version, or Opus, which is Claw 3 Opus. So they compared Meta Llama 3 versus Gemini Pro 1.5. This is what's powering the free version of Gemini, Google Gemini. And Claude 3 Sonnet, this is inside of the Claude website. Sonnet is the middle one that is free to use as well. So the best version of Claude, which right now is the best large language model available, is called Claude 3 Opus. You don't see that in this benchmark. So Claude 3 Opus and ChatGPT 4 or GPT 4, they're still at the top tier where Llama 3, it looks like they're not even trying to pretend to run benchmarks against it. But Llama 370B, is beating Gemini Pro 1.5, which is pretty recent, and Google 3 Sonnet, again, pretty recent, in these benchmarks. It's very close in most use cases, though. As you can see, sometimes it's even losing in some of these benchmarks. Now, this is one of my favorite parts because usually to test out Llama, you had to download it. You had to be pretty technical to go ahead and set it up for yourself. But finally, Meta has Meta.ai, this website right here, and it is powered by Llama 3. Inside of Instagram, WhatsApp, you could also test it over there. But right now, this is basically a ChatGPT competitor now, this meta.ai powered by Llama, completely free to use. You do have to sign in if you want to keep your history here. You have to sign into your Facebook account, which is what I've done here. And let me test out a few different options here as far as prompts go to see how it answers. So here's a prompt. Provide two summaries for this article. The first one is two to three sentences. The second one is five to six sentences, including more details. And I'll copy and paste the other blog. 
and I'll paste the text over here. This is from the meta blog post and I'll send this out. Okay, it took about eight seconds here. So summary one, we have a good answer, not bad. Summary two, a little bit longer. So five, six key points. But for some reason, it did pull things from the internet too. It did a Bing search here to go ahead and do this search, even though I give it the text to pull from. It chose to go to anthropic.com to pull in a little bit more information. And I ran the same thing on ChatGPT just to show you the exact same prompt. So very similar here, ChatGPT 3.5, the free version gave me something very similar here to what Meta gave me, same thing over here. This time, this cannot access the internet, right? That Meta.ai can access the internet, which is interesting. So if you're just using this as a chatbot, the Meta.ai so far does have a capability that ChatGPT 3.5 does not have, which is web access. Okay, let's do another one. This is about writing email. So I wanna see what kind of tone he uses to write an email. A colleague has sent you a frustrated email about a delayed project draft, a reply, acknowledging the frustration, offering a solution, reassuring tone. Let's see what we get. Okay, I read through this and you could pause it if you wanna just kind of get the tone of it, but it's really, really good. It did not use the typical AI verbiage. It's actually very straightforward. The formatting is great. It left the placeholder for the places where we need to type in a name and our name. Really nice. And ChatGPT gave us almost something very, very similar. I think ChatGPT has also gone through some major improvements here and it's really limited some of those verbiage like delve. It used to say delve in almost every type of prompt I would give it. And it looks like it's not doing that anymore. So right now it's very even when I'm comparing this answer of ChatGPT to the meta AI answer powered by Llama 3. Now, if you go under the Imagine tab here, you also could generate images. So this is multimodal to some extent here where you could generate images and animate those images too. So this is one of the examples they gave us, but let's go ahead and just type in a basic prompt. And I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste the prompt here. Look at that. Did you see that? That just happened in real time. I haven't even pressed send. Let me go ahead and press send. I wanna show you this real time capability it has. So that was the one that it created for us in real time. That was the first time you saw it. It was not edited. It created it that fast. And we got four different images over here, right? So every time it creates four different types of images, as you could see over here. And each time I could download it from over here, but I could also press edit. I could type in a prompt here to change this and I could animate it too. You can see it also comes with a little watermark. Let me go ahead and press animate to show you. This takes a few seconds. Okay, that's not too bad. It doesn't quite make it into a movie. It's not enough frames here to be fluid. This is about maybe six, seven different frames that it created to create this little video, but really cool. I haven't seen that option inside of other tools yet. And you could also, inside of any conversation, you could type in imagine a picture of a cat and you could see how in real time is creating that and on a street in New York City in rain. How crazy is that? Every time you type in a new word, it creates it in real time here and you could get a preview in real time and then press send to get alternate options. Now, since the free version of ChatGPT doesn't have this option, I'm gonna just use Gemini. Let's see what Gemini gives us because this is another free option that could turn a text into an image. Let's see what we come up with inside of Gemini just to compare. Okay, not bad. Again, not quite as good as what we could do inside of ChatGPT4 with Dolly. This is not good. And this is not bad. This one looks pretty realistic actually. So maybe that would be the winner. This one, mm, that's pretty bad. Here, I think all four are usable. So I think Meta does beat Gemini. Now, since we have a really easy way to use Llama 3 instead of Meta AI, I'll do a much deeper dive video comparing this for coding, and I'm gonna compare versus ChatGPT 3.5, the free version for creative writing, for extracting information. Basically the 12 key use cases that they mentioned for their benchmarks, I wanna run it with different prompts for those, so I'll, I'll post that as soon as it's ready. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.